Welcome. This is Flip Your Station, the beginner's guide. We are so eager and excited that you are spending your time with us to learn a little bit more about Seesaw and all the possibilities that you can do with it in your own classroom. So quick intro. I'm Angela. I'm out of my kindergarten classroom. I was using five iPads with about 24 students. I lead the community team at Seesaw full time to support you um, and teachers all over the world as they are seesawing. So you can find me on Twitter. I would love to chit chat. I would love to really find out what you're gonna do from today's session in your own classroom. I'm most eager to hear that. Um, if you are listening to this recording, listen for a code that I will share with you orally during this session. You will need the six digit code to get a certificate. So those, those of you on YouTube or listening in a follow up email, that's what you need to do. So our plan for today is we are briefly going to talk about what is flipped learning. And I'm talking very, very brief, but I'm gonna show you, talk a little bit about a classroom setup scenarios and maybe questions that are going through your mind. We're gonna buzz through some examples, again, just to really get your wheels turning and see how you might try this in your own room. And then I'm planning to have time for you to actually get on it right now in this session and build your first flip lesson or at least practice one and then you could always delete it later um, but we are just going to do a like a quick little video today so if you do have a second device even if it's your cell phone get that handy and get yourself signed into your seesaw class you can also just sit back and relax if you just want to watch but then we'll have time for questions and next steps so without further ado, let's just jump right in. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is what is flipped learning? And there's a lot of different terms that are out there. It might be flipped instruction, blended learning, maybe you're cloning yourself. So what I found actually, um, as I was thinking, oh, how sh what sh definition should I share? I actually came across the Flipped Learning Network, and their definition of flipped learning is a pedagogical approach in which direct instruction moves from the group learning space to the individual learning space, and the resulting group space is transformed into a dynamic, interactive learning environment where the educator guides students as they apply concepts and engage creatively in the subject matter. I have the link to that site. They have tons of resources, way more than we're even going to talk about. But again, you may have heard a lot of terms um, going around. And I, I'm calling this flip, but some people might say blended um, or, you know, maybe just sharing, you know, yourself in a, in a clone situation. So stick with me. Um, but let's talk really briefly about classroom setup. And a couple of things I want to let you know. It doesn't matter how many devices you have. You don't need fancy equipment. And the only thing you do have to think about is your procedures and how you're gonna get students um, interacting with what you are recording and sharing. So when we're talking about this idea of, of flipped stations, what I am saying is basically we are going to be practicing in this session a situation where you may have things that you're teaching that normally you might teach in a whole group or even in a small group. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be recording yourself or giving some instruction that is then captured in Seesaw that students can view independently on their own. So you can really individualize, you can offer opportunities for students to revisit, so that's kind of what I'm talking about. So in essence, it's like, oh, if Mrs. Gadke is sitting here with her students across the room, she could have another group of students that might be listening to a recording um, or a video and really starting their learning in that way. So that's what we're talking about in this session. So again, what, when we are getting started today, I am keeping it all inside Seesaw. There's no other apps you need. You don't need fancy screencasting stuff. You don't have, you know, really complicated things. We are starting really, really basic because I think that that 
is also really, really powerful in your classroom, just starting very, very simple. So the one thing that I do wanna mention, and again, I'm moving pretty quickly for those of you that might be brand new to Seesaw. Um, when you are using Seesaw and thinking about where these videos um, or flipped lessons are going to live in Seesaw, there are really two options. So the first option on the left is you create an activity. And when you're creating an activity in the example or multimedia portion, that's where you have the video, okay? Or you might be creating a video and you're posting it to the student journal. And in this case, since I'm a teacher, I like to use sample student. And then what you're doing is you're actually printing a QR code and I'm gonna show you how to do that um, from that post. And you actually, I'm just gonna tell you right now, on that post, you would tap the three dots and just do get item QR code. And you see that QR code there on the screen that is generated that leads students to that post. So we'll talk a little bit later about students accessing and when you might choose to go one option or the other. Um, if you're listening for the code for the certificate, the first three numbers are one, two, eight so again if you're live you don't need to worry about that and let's get into some examples because you might be thinking what what I, I'm, I'm not really getting this but here we go so again because we are staying just inside C so I'm going to share a couple of examples and these are ones that I have created myself and used in my kindergarten classroom. So this was a word workstation and I just used the video tool in Seesaw. So I started using the video tool. So let's listen to this example. I'm gonna turn up my volume so you can hear this. Here we go. Hi kindergarten readers, it's Mrs. Gadke and I've made a game for you so you can practice making some words. And you'll see on these little parts of pool noodles, I've written letters. And you can see that some of the noodles are green and some of them are orange. The ones that are orange have our vowels. And remember, every word has a vowel. So the first word that I built is pet, pet. So because that's a real word, I'm gonna write that on my list of words that I'm building. And now I'm gonna change the last letter hmm so i'm not going to play the whole entire thing but you can see i'm just recording video in seesaw and in this example i just posted that to the journal what would be considered at this point posting it to sample student so another example again we're just creating these videos inside seesaw so think of things that you might be teaching um, to a small group normally or even in a large group and we're really shifting that to free you up to really work with students um, at a completely different level. So um, here's another example and this is created by just going in the, the, the drawing tool and recording um, with the mic and drawing tools. So this is an example of a literacy station that I had created for differentiated groups. So you'll see kind of, it might be hard to see, but it says word letters for green table. So I had four different groups um, going on at this time. So I'm just gonna play a portion of this. Hi readers, today you will be making a word ladder. A word ladder lets you look closely at words and change letters or add letters to make new words. Looking closely at words helps you write words and become a better reader. So you can see I have the word and. To build a word ladder, I am going to add an H to the beginning and make. So again, I just want to point out, this is all done inside Seesaw. I'm not using any other screen casting app or recording tool. It's all in Seesaw. So here's an example of a math station. And again, I'm sharing these various examples um, because I'm highlighting different ways you can record and create these videos just inside Seesaw. So in this example, I've taken a photo, whoa, my slides. Um, I've taken a photo of the objects that they're going to be working with at the station, and then I'm just recording um, with the mic and drawing at the same time. So let's listen to this example just to give you a little sense here. My abacus shows ways to make 10. I have made seven and three 
and I've made five and five. What I want you to do is see how many ways you can show 10 on the abacus. Try to find one, two, Okay, so that again is a really simple idea. The other thing I just want to tell you is, of course, I'm showing you some ideas that you're saying, oh my gosh, I don't teach kindergarten. That doesn't look like my classroom or I'm a fifth grade teacher. Really what I'm trying to share with you is different options for creating these videos. I need you to think of any content that you are already using in your own classroom because it can fit into any of these tools. So just start thinking about that. Um, as you're listening. The other thing I want to point out too, um, you might be able to use um, multi-page, which is a premium feature. If you have Seesaw for Schools, this is a huge um, advantage that you have where you can upload multiple photos and then record your voice um, on each page and draw as well. So here's an example. This is kind of a math um, activity. First, estimate how many pieces of candy you Got. Remember, an estimate means a good guess without counting. Now, can you count your candy? So this goes on for four different pages of kind of multi-step directions. So if you're someone that does a lot of centers or stations and you're working with primary students, you know, this could be one of those situations where of course you're modeling and practicing but you know, you have those friends that need, need those instructions again, this can be really supportive of that as well. So we're gonna try to build our own. Are you ready for this? Woo woo, we can do it. So if you are already signed into Seesaw, I want you to start thinking about what you could try. And it might mean that you are just uh, playing with something in your environment really quickly um, because I'm gonna show you how simple this is. Um, and I'm actually going to, screen share on a device. I have an iPad hooked up here um, on QuickTime. So you can see here I am in a, in a live class as a teacher. So I'm gonna demonstrate the steps on the screen. So if you want to just watch, you can do that. Or you might try to give this a go right as we're playing around. So when you're signed in as a teacher, I'm gonna go ahead and tap the green add button. And again, I could post this video to the journal um, and let me just do that quick right now to show you that flow and example um, post student work and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with photo for this one and on my desk right here i have these amazing math materials so here's my photo and now what i'm going to do because i'm starting with a photo i'm actually going to record my voice and draw so i tapped record with the mic all right, today, mathematicians, we are going to be working with a number. I'm going to choose eight. You could choose any number between five and 10. Now, I went ahead and built different combinations of eight. So for example, I have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Four plus four is eight. Up here, I have one, two. Two plus six is eight. You are going to go ahead and create as many combinations as you can think of that go with your number. Then I'd like you to take a photo and show me your work and explain it using Seesaw. So I'm just going to tap the done button. I'm going to, you notice that it's saved as a video because I recorded with the mic. I'm going to tap the green check. Of course, you're going to do something more sophisticated than what I just did. Um, but then, then I'm going to add this to the journal, okay? So when this is added to the journal, again, the benefit of that is that if you're working with itty itty bitties um, and you have, you know, stations that maybe you use year after year and you're really trying to come up with a situation of, I'm going to tap sample student, tap the green check. If you're coming up with a situation where you want students just to go over to that station and simply scan um, the QR code to this post to just be taken right to that video, this will be a good workflow for you. So again, as a teacher, I can tap the three dots and then just, um, on, I guess because I'm on the iPad here, print with QR code, I could choose that and we'll have a QR code going directly to that post. 
okay? The other option though, is that if you add and you go to assign activity, you are gonna go ahead and just choose create new activity. And the part that I wanna highlight right here, I'm gonna give this a title, making eight. Is this, this, do you see this first plus where it says add multimedia instructions or example? That's where you're gonna create your video right in there. So I'm gonna go right here. Again, I can start with photo, I could start with drawing, I could start with upload if I'm doing multiple, um, multiple pages, I could do a straight up video as I showed you in that first example. But again, I'm gonna just go to photo, take my photo just as, as I had done and shared with you a moment ago. And again, I have the same options here. So I can go ahead and tap record. I can say, at this station, we are exploring the number eight. And I'm gonna keep going and talking and talking. I'm gonna pretend I'm done with my whole video. Tap the green check. This is then going to be added to the example portion of this activity. Then I can go ahead and I can finish writing the instructions for the activity. So of course I would do something, you know, like build your numbers. I'm going really, really fast for today. Um, and I might say, of course, I would say all of the instructions like tap the add button, add button to start this activity, right? Let's pretend I have all of my instructions fully done. I have voice instructions even, right? Notice I did not add a template for student responses because in this one, I want them to use all the creative tools. So they might be taking a photo and things like that. So I'm gonna tap the save option. Now, what I could do when I assign this, so when my students see this, they will just actually uh, tap on that example and start playing the video. Okay, and you probably won't hear it, hear it because I'm set up kind of weird right now. But when I go ahead and assign this to students, I could then um, choose the specific students I wanna assign this to. So maybe I only want a few to get this. If I'm differentiating, there we go. Now again, the benefit of having it as an activity is that you could activity stay on your Seesaw account. You can use it over and over and over again, um, year after year. Meaning if you start a new Seesaw class next year, these activities are still gonna be there. The downfall of activities, I would say, is that I think that some teachers go a little wild, I'm gonna say, and maybe they assign like 10 or 15 or a ton of activities to their students. And there's lots of things waiting for students in the activity feed. And if you're working with really little students, that could be very overwhelming and they're not really going to be able to navigate it. So when I talk about posting to the journal instead, where they are, they're just basically going to scan that code with the QR reader right in Seesaw down here at scan. Um, again, it's built right in to read any of those QR codes that go to post, so they don't have to jump out of this at all, okay? So I went through that really, 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 really quickly to demonstrate. Now, if you are feeling really good, like, just go for it. Give it a try. I want you to, to actually, before you, to, you know, turn your, go to sleep tonight, I want you to try this out. So again, you can just Start with anything, record, take a photo, record with the mic, draw, explain something. I've seen this used to give differentiated spelling tests. Think of the time you could say, right? If that was just a station that students went and listened or played the video, think about um, how you can differentiate more or think about, again, freeing yourself up to have some of those deeper conversations with students because they're able to um, get started and supported with a video that you've already created. The other thing I would suggest is get with your grade level friends and say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna do this video, you do this one, and then you can also share those as well. So, um, you can also borrow, as it says right here on the screen. So I actually have um, a collection, an activity collection, right? I've just shown a couple on the screen here that you might see if you visit my activity collection, which would be linked in the slide, um, where there are, are embedded videos in the example. 
So the, the thing I really want you to remember when you are thinking about doing this on your own is keep it simple. Like try something, keep it really simple, use the tools in Seesaw that, we ju that I just showed you, right? So again, we're moving super, super, super quickly right now. So those of you that are just beginning with Seesaw, this probably might not be something you wanna try right now, but you could, I hope, that would be amazing. Um, it is very, very easy because I just use the tools that you're already using, um, but just presenting it in a slightly different way um, from you, the teacher, sharing and having that available for students to use when they are at a station. So questions and next steps. Um, before I go into that, the last three digits for the certificate, if you're watching the recording, are 736. So think about questions that you have for me, but I also want you to be intentional about your next step, okay? So, so wherever you are in this journey that we've just gone on for 20 so minutes, um, say, what are you going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow I will. Maybe it's going to be look at my lesson plan book and pick out one time, one aspect, one little teeny tiny lesson um, that I could record for my students instead of them hearing it directly from me. Okay, so that might be your step one. Maybe your tomorrow I will is maybe tomorrow I will explore using the video tool to create a flipped video. Maybe it's tomorrow I will talk to my colleagues and say, hey, I just watched this amazing webinar. We should try this, right? So think about your next steps. I'm gonna jump into the questions and I probably won't get through everybody's question, but guess what? You know how to find me. I'm on Twitter. Um, you're gonna get this recording as well too. And boy, we could have probably been here for 90 minutes, right? Um, yay, Clarissa, she is gonna just go for it tomorrow. I love it, I love it. Jessica, when I post to the journal and print the QR code, what happens when the student scans the QR code? Does it go right to the activity or do they select their name? Great question, Jessica. So when you post to the journal, it never goes to the activity. It's just gonna show, it's just going to show the video. They will then just post to the journal um, without the activity flow. Okay, so hopefully that clarifies that. Uh, let's see, Whitney, how long does it typically take to create an assignment, including typing up the instructions for students under assignment details? Um, so Whitney, it can be pretty quick. Um, it really depends on what you're trying to have them um, do. So I can't really answer that super accurately, but I've done some in five minutes. So really, really depends what you're trying to do. Um, speaking of differentiation, am I able to assign leveled activities to different students? So yeah, you saw that. I demonstrated how you could do that. I know, love this. Yes, Laura, just try something tomorrow, right? Just try something. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, so how do you use the QR code? So I love, thank you for asking that. Um, I'm going really, really quickly, and I'm gonna see if I can show you on the screen. This might be pushing my tech, my tech connected limits here, but let's, let's see what I can do. So this is my iPad right here. Uh, I'm gonna go into the Seesaw class. Now, this is on my computer. So I'm gonna tap, because this is posted to the journal, I'm gonna tap the three dots, and I'm just gonna go to get item QR code. So envision this is sitting at a station for your little kinder babies, right? Your little five-year-olds, okay? Um, when they go to that station in their Seesaw account, they have the ability in the upper left to tap their profile icon and at the bottom, go to scan, okay? So now, because I'm holding my iPad in my hand, see I'm moving that around, I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna scan this QR code. And this, is what my screen looks like, what I just scanned. So now I can push play. So it's going to play the video. Okay, you can't hear it because I'm plugged in. But for your students, that's what they'll do. That was pretty easy, right? Of course, they're not gonna try to do it on two devices at the same time, but they're just gonna scan it there. 
So this QR code is actually created for you. Anything you post to Seesaw, you can generate a QR code to that post. So hopefully that answers that question for you. Oh yes, yes, so Michelle is saying she's gonna record some extensions in mathematics. Love that. When I post to the journal, will it go to parents too? No, not if you're posting to sample student. If I put activities in the sample student folder, would I lose access to the videos in that folder when I archive the class at the end of the school year? So Lori, great question. I'm glad you're thinking ahead to that. That would also be the benefit of using it um, via an activity instead. Um, the videos will technically still be accessible um, by scanning the QR code, but they could be deleted if your account is deleted if you haven't used it in a while and we kind of ask permission. So just think about that. Some teachers actually create a separate class where they have all their, um, if they're, you know, creating a class of just stored videos, they just keep that active, if that makes sense. Um, all right, I only have a few more minutes. We've got tons of questions still coming in, so I'm gonna do my best, but I've gotta jump into another webinar here in a moment. How do I make a QR code for a folder that has videos in the folder, not the individual post? So Larissa, you're gonna do that by just, um, on the web, you can sort, by a folder um, and it will it will print the entire folder of items uh, with a QR code on them okay so that again is a really 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 quick explanation love these tomorrow I'm going to I love it I love it can the QR code accessible anywhere else and not just within Seesaw so you can scan that QR code with other QR reader apps um, I think it's just easier though for students to just scan it with the app they're already using. So just as I showed you, but if someone outside of Seesaw would do that, they could do that and view it. All right, I love all these tomorrow, I will. Oh, okay, so Tanya, oh, Tania is saying, if I post it to the journal, will my parents see it to watch the video? So if you post a sample student, the answer is no. So that is another reason that you might choose to do it via the activity flow and adding it as an example, because once family, once a student responds to the activity, families can actually um, see the activity instructions, if that makes sense. Will I have to approve their work before parents view it? Of course. So fam you always have to approve work before families view it at all. So keep that in mind as well. Um, those of you that are still have questions waiting, I'm going to try to uh, buzz out of here. And I know we needed more time for questions, but hopefully you can reach out to me on Twitter or check out our health center or jump into Seesaw Teachers. Maybe you want to keep the conversation going and say, hey, I was just in Angela's session and I have lots of questions. What do you know? Because there are lots of teachers that are already trying this. So give that a go. We are going to exit out of here, but I need you to stick around for one minute and fill out a survey that's going to pop up on this screen because we want your feedback. You want to tell me, Angela, we really needed 45 minutes. It's okay to tell me that or say maybe uh, what you want to learn about next time. So thanks everyone for coming. See you later.